economists, they're often wrong. They largely fail to predict the global financial crisis, but they hold much of policymakers' faith. So should we trust their forecasts? With me now is the undercover economist himself, Tim Hofford, to offer the answer. Tim, it's been said of late that the variables for measuring markets are becoming more and more complex, with national boundaries blurring, supply and demand complexities becoming so entwined. So what indicators do you look towards? I personally try and avoid making forecasts entirely. We have very good evidence that economic forecasts are not very good, that economists cannot see into the future any more than anybody else. Uh, and this isn't unique to economists, by the way. Sociologists can't do it. Political scientists can't do it. The future is difficult. And so it's a source of tremendous frustration to me that my profession, economics, which I think is tremendously useful, finds itself caricatured as a bunch of crystal ball gazers. And do you think governments should be employing purely traditional economists, analysing recent trends and applying macroeconomic theory? In many ways, it's like saying we should beware the Ides of March. Governments employ economists to do all kinds of things and you can make perfectly useful pieces of economic analysis and you can forecast certain kinds of things. For example, uh, an internet retailer has a tremendous amount of data and has a pretty good idea what will happen if, for example, they put an item on promotion. They have a sense of what people are going to do and they also have a sense of what people might buy given what they've already bought. I mean, in this sort of field, forecasting is possible. When you start to look at the kind of things where the, the talking heads pop up on business television uh, and they're all chief economists of investment banks and they say, well, this is going to happen to China and this is going to happen to Mexico. And, and we can't do this. We've never been able to do this. It hasn't got any easier. We've got better data, but at the same time, the problem has got more complicated. So I, I slightly wonder why it is that we're so interested in these forecasts. To me, they're, they're a little bit like the peacock's tail. You know, they're, they're designed to attract attention, they look colourful, they're interesting, but then they don't actually serve any function. Um, but we, we're just addicted to them. They're, they're, appealing. they're like Pringles. We find them really appealing, but they're not actually good for us. So we keep snacking on forecasts, but we, as long as we don't expect any profound nutritional or intellectual value from them, I think we'll be doing fine. Now, you wrote that economists have little incentive to do better as it's safer to be vague. How have they got away with it for so long? Is it just laziness as most people can't be bothered to analyse economic data and articles themselves? I think people are um, remarkably complacent when it comes to going back and checking whether a forecast was correct. And this is a very, very old phenomenon. So Roger Babson, one of the great forecasters of the 1920s, set up Babson College, made, made an absolute mint. He was famous because he spotted the Great Depression coming. But he also spotted lots and lots of other things coming that didn't happen, and he missed lots of things that did happen. But he was very good at advertising his forecasting successes, and nobody ever went back and said, okay, systematically, what is your track record? They just said, oh, Babson spotted the Great Depression, spotted the Wall Street crash. And I, I think that remains true, not completely true, but it is largely true of modern forecasters. After the Great Financial Crisis, you had certain people who'd said certain things that maybe possibly indicated that they might have seen trouble coming. They might have been saying the same thing for 20 years, but suddenly up they pop and they say they spotted it coming. And, and that's not really the right way to examine forecasts. But none of us, I don't think we really treat forecasts as statements about the future. We treat forecasts as interesting commentaries on the present. It's really kind of tedious to have somebody explain all the details of what's going on in the Chinese economy or all the details of what's happening say in the war in Syria, absolute disaster there, to explain all the different parties and what's going on. It, it, that's hard. To have somebody say, oh, I think Assad will be out by next summer or I think Chinese GDP growth will fall below 4% in 2016, suddenly you feel like you've understood the situation. You haven't really understood anything. You, but the forecast is very easy to consume. Finally, how can financial professionals overcome their industry's tendency towards unrealistic and irrational ideas around forecasting and expectations of the future? Get in a team of people who are willing to say you're wrong. Number two, be willing to say that you yourself are wrong. Always look for a second opinion and a third opinion. Always look for disconfirming data. Number three, keep track of your record. Test yourself and try and learn. And number four, realise the future is hard to see into. Forecasting is difficult and you've just got to manage your own expectations and other people's expectations of you.